these are the last few problems from the lecture from our review of uh, Calc 1, or we're going back over the u substitution. So let's consider the following problem, the integral of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared dx. Now, instead of going down the road and trying some things that don't work, I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips about how to start this one. If you try to use u plus, sorry, u is equal to 1 plus x squared, you run into a problem. You have to get just x, but you have that 1 plus on top that causes the problem. So the trick on this one to get down to something that you can integrate is to recognize that you can split a fraction across its numerator, keeping the denominator the same. For example, in this problem, I can rewrite 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared as two fractions added together, 1 over 1 plus x squared plus x over 1 plus x squared. All I've done is split the numerator. Now, because I've got two added functions, then I can integrate each one of them separately. So this becomes the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx plus the integral of x over 1 plus x squared dx. And then I will handle each of these separately. The nice thing about the first integral is that it is straight off of our table of simple integrals. It is the inverse tangent of x. Now the second one I'm going to have to use u substitution which will now work in the form that it's in. So we're going to let u equal the denominator 1 plus x squared then du becomes 2x dx. So I need a 2 inside I will pull a 1 half outside. Now I have a du and the denominator is u. So what I now have is, of course, the first integral becomes tangent inverse of x plus 1 half integral of 1 over u du. Now don't get sidetracked here and try to handle that second integral as u to the minus 1 and use the power rule. Remember, the power rule does not apply when you have a minus 1 up here because when you add that you get a 0 add 1 to that you get a 0 but we do have a formula off of our table we recall that the integral of 1 over u from our table and just from um, remembering the rule about natural logs in um, differentiation that's going to be natural log of the absolute value of u so I can rewrite this now as tangent inverse of x plus 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then we have to do our substitute back in. So I get tangent inverse of x plus 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x squared plus c. Now that's an acceptable answer, but let me just point out that these two absolute value signs here are actually unnecessary in this case. In this case they're unnecessary because the inside of that is always positive. Right? When you take the absolute value of something, you're stripping it of its sign, making it positive. So if it's positive, it stays positive. If it's negative, it becomes positive. But if the inside function of an absolute value is always positive, then you don't have to write it as an absolute value. So you'd rewrite this as the arctangent or inverse tangent of x plus the natural log of 1 plus x squared plus c. Excuse me. All right. So that's that one. Let's look at the next one, e to the 2x plus 1. This one actually isn't too bad. It's mostly the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try straight out to do a substitution. So let's let u just be that denominator. If I let it be the numerator, then I'd have to deal with that plus 1 in the denominator, so I think it makes sense to go ahead and use the entire denominator. Let's try it and see if it works. There's going to be a lot of that this semester. Try it and see how far you can get, and if it doesn't work, try something else. In this case, let's try e to the 2x plus 1. Now du is going to take the derivative of that, so e to the 2x derivative is itself times the derivative of what's inside, which is e to the 2x, and then derivative of 2x is 2, so I get 2e to the 2x dx. So I have e to the 2x dx in my integral. What I'm missing is a 2. So I'm going to multiply in the 2 and multiply by 1 half on the outside. 
here's my du and here's my u so plugging in I have one half integral of one over u du which we know to be one half natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and substituting back in I end up with one half natural log of the absolute value of e to the 2x plus 1 all plus c and then as before I recognize e to the 2x is always a positive number you take e or raise it to a positive number or a negative number you always get a positive number out of it so the inside of that logarithm is also positive always so in this case I can drop those absolute values and just write them as parentheses it's not wrong the other way it's just extraneous so it's better to pay attention and notice when you have an inside of a logarithm that is always positive you don't have to put an absolute value but if it's possible for the inside to be negative you would leave that there alright let's do uh, the last example so we now have integral of 2x plus 3 over x plus 1 to the fourth alright now if you attempt this on your own in fact I encourage you to do that pause the video give this one a shot and see if you can't find the integral now the problem here is you're gonna get stuck with extra terms left over on top right if I just my, my best suggestion for you to get started even before you pause the video and try it on your own is to use u is equal to x plus one but the problem is it doesn't neatly cancel out all the x's so I have a trick up my sleeve that I want to show you so you see it occasionally you might have to use something like this what I notice is what I would really like is just nothing on top maybe a constant on top because when I take the derivative of x plus one I get just one I don't have any x's left over so that x in the numerator is a problem because I'll have x's left over so here's what I do I'm going to adjust the top in such a way so that I can split the numerator up and in one of my numerators I will be able to cancel the X let me show you all I did was split that 3 into 2 plus 1 you agree that that's clearly the same as the integral that's on the page at the beginning and why did I choose 2x plus 2 plus 1 the answer is I can factor out that 2 from the first two terms of the numerator and get 2 times x plus 1 and then the other one is just plus 1 I'm gonna split that off into a separate fraction now no that's pretty slick it's kinda of underhanded but it's perfectly legitimate now I can cancel the x plus 1 on top with one of the x plus 1's on bottom and I only have 2 over x plus 1 cubed now I'll treat each of these integrals separately using basic u substitution I'll be able to integrate them each on their own so the first one I would let u be x plus 1 then du would be simply dx because the derivative of x plus 1 is 1 so now I can just replace dx straight with du and so I have 2 over u cubed du the second one I do the same thing let u be x plus 1 and then du becomes dx so I can replace the dx straight with du and the x plus 1 to the fourth on bottom becomes u to the fourth so I have plus the integral of 1 over u to the fourth du. Now I'm just going to use the power rule on those. Think of 2 over u cubed as 2u to the minus 3, and 1 over u to the fourth is u to the minus 4. So you apply the power rule, add 1 to the exponent, and divide by that exponent. So you have 2u to the minus 2 over minus 2, plus u to the minus 3 over minus 3. Simplify don't forget the plus C negative 1 there so I have a minus 1 over u squared plus sorry minus because of the minus 3 on bottom and I left off my 3 so let me put that 3 in there now plug back in the u 
with a 3 right there. Negative 1 over, plugging in x plus 1 for u. u is x plus 1 squared minus 1 over 3, x plus 1 cubed, all plus c. There's your final answer. And that's the rest of the problems I wanted to do.